My name is Engineer Abolaji Tijani Ayobami. Uh, I reside in the city of Houston. I am the uh, National General Secretary of uh, Egbio Magyaruba, North America, which comprises of the United States and Canada, Mexico, and all other North American countries. Uh, I am the, also the Chapter Secretary of the Egbe of Magyaruba, North America, in Houston. I happen to always be, also be the National General Secretary of uh, your state progressive Association of North America in cooperation, which comprises of uh, the US, Canada, Mexico, and all other North American countries as well. Yoruba of North America, which is acronymed EOYNA, is an umbrella organization of the Yoruba Descendants Union of North America. This EGBE was established about 25 years ago during the uh, hot politics that happened in the nation of Nigeria during the military era. Some group of people that were exiled and a dominant uh, those, I mean, a president in the United States and Canada come together to form this Egbe Oma Yoruba. And the purpose of forming the Egbe Oma Yoruba was to be able to fight the military era or the military junta of those days, uh, who truncate the uh, political process that uh, bring birth to the June 12, 1993 election of uh, chief or uh, Bashono MK Abiola that was annulled, uh, the most freest and the fairest election in the history of Nigeria at that time. So this group of people in the North American uh, area formed this Egbe to demand justice and to enthrone democracy. And they've been doing this for almost 25 years and uh, uh, I'm going to tell you that they have done excellently job, the excellent job and excellently well that what we see today in Nigeria's democracy, uh, they are part of the architect of making democracy to thrive in Nigeria. Uh, it's comprised of uh, Yoruba sons and daughters of any walks of life, or any race, or any creed in the whole world. And um, uh, it's an umbrella organization that is non-partisan, but is political. Uh, they are interested in the politics or the political situation in the country, but they don't endorse any party. Uh, they are not uh, in support of one party. All the members belong to several different parties, but there is a common goal, which is the advancement of the Yoruba people and uh, the establishment of uh, fundamental rights of existence in uh, the Nigerian project. The Egbe Yoruba of North America uh, uh, headquarters is in Washington, D.C. Uh, we have uh, three set of um, uh, people, I mean, a uh, group that, that run the organization. Uh, the, the, Paramount, uh, uh, pers the Paramount group in the organization is called the National Executive Council, they call it NEC. This NEC comprises of all the chapters because individual states in North America and country have their chapters. And these chapters the one that come together to form a parochial body that call the National Executive Council mem uh, members. They are the ones that formulate the rules and regulations on how the EGBA is being run. Uh, now, the second one is called the uh, chapter membership, which is every state. At least we have about 18 to 19 states or 19 chapters in the North America have their own self-governed or self-administrated uh, uh, chapter of the Egbe Yoruba. Yoruba. Though they are affiliated with Egbe Yoruba, but they are self-governed, self-administered. And the third one is called the ESCO, the executive member. These executive members are elected officers that are elected to run the affairs of the EGBE for at least two years. And uh, after the, se the second year, there's a re-election or there's a new election. This ESCO comprises of the president, the national general secretary, the national uh, public secretary of public affairs, the national legal secretary, 
the National Secretary of Women Affairs, uh, the Assistant, I mean, I mean the National Treasurer, and the National Financial Secretary, the Assistant General Secretary, the Vice President, the um, Assistant Secretary of Public Affairs, and the ex official member, which is which used to be the uh, the uh, pre predecessor president uh, before the incumbent. Uh, we have uh, the president. Uh, they will live in different states. Uh, Honorable Yeyafi Monilola Tenabe, and uh, my humble self as the National General Secretary, Honorable Abolaji Tijani Ayobami. Uh, we have the uh, Vice President, uh, who lives in uh, Vancouver, Canada, Honorable Ola Duntoye. Uh, um, Ola Duntoye is in Canada, and uh, the National Public Relations Officer, or Secretary of Public Affairs, Honorable Ayodeji Famuide. And uh, the National uh, Legal Secretary, Honorable Ayototi, the National Women Affairs Secretary, Honorable Iyafe Mopelola Adinyaju, and um, uh, the rest of them that form the executive. They see to the day-to-day run, -day running of the Egbe's activities uh, all over the nation and both in at home. Now, the Egbe is known for two major events. There's a national convention that comes once in a year where we allow all Yoruba sons and daughters all over the world to come and celebrate uh, the diversity and the interest and the opportunity that uh, the God of the Yoruba has given everyone. And that is the same uh, event where we honor our Yoruba sons and daughters that are ex done exceptionally well that have trailblazers in the area of business, both uh, technical, social, economical, or political. Uh, and this is where we recognize them and commend them for the well done, uh, well done effort to uh, keep the image of the Yoruba people flying. Now, um, we extend our invitations to all other uh, Nigerian uh, associations too, because we want to be friendly to the Yawusa, the Hebo, and every one of them from other tribes to come and see the cultural heritage that Yoruba people have and uh, live in harmony with them. So this kind of uh, national convention is a very big event. Uh, this year one is coming up in Washington DC, it's their 21st anniversary, and it's coming up in Washington DC, uh, uh, USA. Uh, so we invite as many as want to come and join us. The second event is called the quarterly meetings of the national executive member. There are four quarterly meetings that the NEC National executive members uh, uh, undertake every year, and uh, we, we we attend these next meetings in different parts of uh, the nation, wherever the host chapter is about to host us. Now, is a is a meeting where the president and the secretary of individual chapter are mandatory to attend, and all other local uh, hosting chapter too. And this is where we discuss about the progress, or what they call progress report, or what happens among the uh, Yoruba people in the diaspora and at home. Well, this is where we uh, take uh, stands and we take uh, we dialogue and we come up, we communicate what we are expecting the government of Nigeria to do for the advancement and for the um, uh, development of the Yoruba uh, nation or Yoruba tribe people. Uh, so this is a place where. We, we call it a think tank, where people sit down and think about what is the next uh, line of action to move our people forward, uh, to move our nation forward and to move the entire world forward through our activities. Yoruba of North America, especially those in the US and Canada, we are so much interested in the promotion of our culture, our heritage, and our socio-economic uh, beliefs, and our language. You know, this Egbe have championed a lot of cause, especially with parents in the North American area, so that our children will not forget about the heritage and the culture and the language. And therefore, that is why we promote the, the indigenous languages like Yoruba. 
we promote it among our people so that not only because they are living in uh, a foreign land like the United States or Canada and uh, the only language that we speak every day here is the lingua franca which is English but still each and individual could help by raising their children up to learn their language you see, if they are bilingual or multilingual, it gives them more edge than their uh, uh, mates or their colleagues who don't know only one language. Everybody knows that if you are coming from the Hispanic uh, society or, or area, they teach their children not only to speak the lingua franca, but they still speak Spanish. The same thing with the French. The same thing with the Chinese. They teach them from their youth so that when they grow up, they will not forget the heritage of their forefathers. Now, the Agbema Yoruba to find out that uh, if we don't take this action to inculcate our language into the way we teach our children, uh, it might be going to extinction. And if you know, by statistics, uh, the Yoruba nation have a population of about 50 million people. That's a lot of people. That's a country on its own. More than any country combined together in Europe. More than in the United Kingdom or France or Germany. So we believe that they are scattered all over the world and at least about four to five million is or more than that. Some some figures said it's about twelve million Yorubas are scattered all over the world. So we believe that this number is so sizable and uh, the promotion of our culture our language and our heritage is very important so that we don't get it uh, extincted from the society. Now, this is why we support the teaching of our people, of our children uh, at home or in their schools to in include into their curriculum the teaching of our local dialect, the Yoruba language. And that is why one of the publishers that have networked with us uh, in this area have come up with uh, the publication of a book for the beginners. This book is, is, uh, is, is uh, uh, authored by one uh, Mr. Babatunde Tijani and uh, the purpose of authoring this book is to be able to teach our children the, uh, the beginning or the beginner, especially those in the diaspora of our language. It's just like the same way they taught them in the school about how to read ABC. This book is about how to read uh, the uh, the uh, letters of the Yorubas in Yoruba. They call it alphabet, A B D Yoruba, the alphabet of Yorubas. It's the beginning because if you don't know the alphabet and you don't know how to construct the word, how are you going to speak it? So it's a colorful book uh, and it's uh, a pictorial book where, when they look at it, it comprises of uh, the words, the sound, the pronunciation, and uh, uh, the pictures. To depict what they are talking about you know if you look at it you see a lot of things there this is very good for beginners and um, very good for our uh, children here in the diaspora uh, for example you see the one with the letter a it is called ha they see they put it as pronounced as a so they show them how to pronounce it different from the uh, regular english uh, uh, pronunciation so and they show as example of uh, uh, an uh, item or uh, a figure that start with that alphabet, and they put the name of the, alpha, uh, the of the of the figure or the item in the right the Yoruba name, and they put the English name. So when when any child that lives in the United States or Canada pick up this book, they can self teach themselves because they will know that this R is pronounced as ha, not like a in English, and for a dog. In Yoruba is Aja, and uh, you see, they can see from the pronunciation is Aja. So before you know it, they will be able to learn this thing and be able to um, be able to be able to speak and uh, formulate some words. And this is why this book is being uh, supported by the Yoruba Yoruba. And uh, we, 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 if anybody is interested, they can get it. And also, the same uh, publisher come up with the writing. This is for the writing. Now, this writing is like whatever they see over there, they can now trace it and write it and even form sentence or form words from what they see in that. So it could be like a testing exercise where you let your children read first and they go to the writing and form uh, some, some words or sentence of what they have read. This is the writing material. Then also, they have the 
uh, uh, what they call the flashcard. This flashcard is a replica of what is in the book, but for teachers or people that are teaching uh, their children how to speak the language, they might want to use this one as a test. It's a, it's a, a vowels and consonant flashcard where when they read the book, they can be tested by, by exposing them to, uh, uh, I mean, by using the flashcard to ask them questions of what they have been taught. For example, look at the flashcard. You can see from the back, it shows the alphabet, the way it's pronounced, and the other side, it shows the figure, the name of the figure, both in Yoruba and in uh, English. Now, this from A to A to Y, like they say. So you can have all these things in your house to test your people or children and to let them understand. You know, if you look at the English language, they show them flashcard too. And we, we know, we learn from history that children are able to cope or to catch up with uh, seeing pictorial things to match up with the wordings. So these are the reason why uh, this publication is, uh, was made. And uh, this is why we encourage people to try and lay their hands on this and teach their children. We don't want our language to go into a station. Let them be proud of their cultural heritage or their forefathers' root. And the only way we can do it, instead of learning other language uh, alone, uh, Chinese is good, Spanish is good, French is good, but your local dialect, your local language, your generational language too is as good as well. Because tomorrow you don't know where the tide will turn. And if these children that are supposed to have a quiet knowledge of what uh, the language is all about doesn't have it, uh, I'm sorry, they might be using their own top money, top dollars, to buy the language that belongs to their forefathers very soon. Uh, we have seen a lot of universities in America that are promoting Yoruba language and even sending some of their Caucasian students to go to Nigeria and go to the Yoruba land and learn how to speak the language uh, uh, friendly. For example, the University of Wisconsin have embarked on a lot of projects like that. And uh, we know the outcome that it produces people that are so fluent in that Yoruba language, uh, they are related with our cultural heritage and they are proud that they can speak that Yoruba because it looks like Yoruba is the most complex uh, um, language in the world because it's the only language where you can translate uh, one word into three or four meanings. So, and if you can know Yoruba, I bet you, you will know a lot of languages because it may look difficult, but once you master it, you can master anything. And also, they have a world chart. See, this world chart is also like the same thing that you see in the book. It can be hung in your doorstep, in the doorway, in the children's room, or in their study room, or in their library at home. And when they see it, the, the, the colorful things here, the, the pictorial the representation, and the uh, alphabet pronunciation and all. No, I think it's going to be so sensitizing for them that they'll be interested to read it all over. And within 24 hours or more, a, a child I've never been to Nigeria or Yoruba land will be able to speak fluently and, and, and speak and read this thing clearly as they read their regular ABC in school.
for African American, every one of us in the world, we have a root. Even with the African American that is docile, or uh, I mean, I mean domicile, sorry, so domicile in the United States, they come from somewhere. Uh, a lot of times, people have suffered identity crisis. They want to know where they come from, where they belong. But if you look at history, and we look at the population trend, Africa come from the same area. That's why we look alike. Now, if people cannot do the genealogy to find out where they come from, I, as the secretary of the Egbuyama Yoruba, we encourage them to find their root in Yoruba language, in Yoruba people. Because the Yoruba people are so many all over the world. And I believe they are not just like that. It's the heritage of our forefathers. They are warriors. They, they are adventurers. They go everywhere to establish a family, to establish empires. And I bet you, majority of our people over here in African American settings, uh, we find out that if they look at the blood, they probably have some blood that comes from there. And uh, one of these examples, I will refer to a prominent uh, uh, judge in the United States. Her name is Honorable George Glenda Archett. Uh, one of our conventions, especially the one we had in 2012, uh, we were able to christen her and induct her into the Yoruba Hall of Fame because she found out that uh, genetically she come from uh, the Yoruba people. Uh, this is on our website, this is on the, on the YouTube. We have a very big celebration to welcome her home and she publicly and officially declared that she is a Yoruba woman and uh, she see her traits the Yoruba trait in her, and uh, she's interested in learning how to speak the language. I bet you a lot of people are like that too. They're looking for that uh, root. They want to find their root. They go to Ancestry.com. But some of the people, when they get to a, a, a point, they cannot go beyond that point. Now, beyond that point that they cannot go through is your African root, if you're African American. It is your Nigerian root. It is your Yoruba root. And you need to be able to look ahead of time look at people they resemble each other and when you see your resemblance try and uh, attach yourself and find out more and if you learn how to speak this language and you go to areas like nigeria and the yoruba setting they won't even know the difference whether you are from america from europe or from uh, canada or from asia but as long as you speak their language they induct you they they accept you as one of them so that is why i would advise that american african american too can get this book and learn how to speak this language as a prerequisite for them to be able to locate their forefathers route everybody comes from somewhere and uh, now this is why we will promote this book among them if they want it I will give before the end of the program I will give the information for them where they can find it now in the Nigerian context these books are not only in the Yoruba language the publisher of this book have done so well that they have produced this same book in Igbo language and in Hausa language. And presently, I was told they are working on the numerals. In Yoruba, they call it Unka. That is the, the, the arithmetic part of it, how people can even uh, learn how to uh, the numbers in their local languages. So, all these packages, they have it in all the three major languages in uh, uh, Nigeria, which is Yoruba, Hausa, and Igbo. And I bet you, if you want any one of them, we will get it to you at our earliest as soon as possible. Uh, there is a website you can go to to, to learn more about it. It is called uh, www.aquagreen. Aquagreen is the name of the company that publishes these books. Aqua Green NG, that's in Nigeria, dot com. Aqua Green NG dot com. Or you can send me an email at Aqua Green Nigeria Limited at gmail dot com. Or you can send uh, your email to EFATAB at yahoo dot com. Uh, that email I just gave, if you send it to you within 24 hours, you will get your information and if you place an order, uh, you will get your order right away. Uh, once again, the email is efatab at yahoo.com and you can reach us on the phone. Uh, phone number in the US is 
area code 313-520-6175 or you can call the distributor in Nigeria uh, the publisher's office also is in Nigeria you can reach them on the Nigerian number uh, with uh, international code number plus 234-807-209-0610 plus 234-209 I'm, I'm sorry, 234-807-209-0610 uh, I hope this information will be uh, enough for you and uh, I look forward to talking to as many as are interested in getting this as time goes on. Thank you. Now, the package, this, this uh, materials are sold in the package. The reading, the writing, the flashcard and the word chart. This is a package. No, people can buy individually, but the package, the price that the publisher is putting in for the North American, uh, uh, North American people and Canada and Europe, for the package of this book, the four of them is $35. But if you buy them independently, separately, each one is $10. But if you buy the package, which includes the reading of the alphabet of Yoruba, the writing of the alphabet of Yoruba, the flashcard of the vowels and the consonant, and the word chart is $35 I mean package. Individually, it's $10. So the same thing with the ebooks. They are in package like this. Sorry, I don't have the material. We exhausted the one we have for the ebooks and the awusa because they just got published and they were going like fire. So if you want any of the package, you need to send me an email or make me a phone call and uh, I will be able to get it into you within a short time. And I said, package is $35, individual is $10, $10. So the choice is yours. Thank you. plays a very important role in promoting our culture, our language, and our heritage. This is why uh, a station, television station like you, the Afrocentric television station, uh, is doing an excellent job in promoting this kind of um, cultural heritage. And uh, I want to tell you, information is at the fingertips, right there. But somebody has to disseminate that information. They have to broadcast that information. That is where the media come in. Where the word of mouth cannot get to, uh, one single broadcast can reach the entire world. And uh, the media has been influential since time immemorial over policy making, over lifestyle, over uh, uh, making something happen in a very voluminous way. And that is why we are trying to encourage this kind of uh, media station to continue. We will promote you among our people and we'll let you cover events that you can showcase that your, your, your aim and objective of being the trailblazer in the African-American community and the entire nation of the world is uh, uh, second to none. It's uncomparable by anybody. And uh, we appreciate what you're doing and we, we thank the, uh, I mean, the um, companies, executive and the organizers of this kind of program that uh, uh, God will continue to strengthen you and bless you to be able to do amazing things to affect the life of people positively so that uh, the world can remain at peace and uh, uh, harmony and uh, all these things we are talking about within a short time uh, the whole world will know that something good can come from Africa and something good have come from Africa so to say uh, thank you for inviting me in your program to, and uh, look forward to being here anytime and I want to ask people to try and seek your patronage because you guys are doing amazing and excellent production, excellent job. Uh, and this is not because I'm here. I've seen a lot of television stations. I've been on a lot of television stations, uh, programs, 
But uh, what I saw here today in the studio and the way the people relate with me and the way uh, you handle your business here is outstanding. And I give you the credit, I give uh, you the uh, opportunity that there's a room for improvement. But please, don't settle for less. Don't mind how the out of the uh, business is. But I bet you, very soon, uh, you will break through in a way that uh, all other media uh, organizations like the CNN, the Fox News, and all of them have broken out before. Uh, once again, thank you for inviting me into your program. Uh, I look forward to hearing more from uh, your viewers about all these uh, information that I just gave. Thank you.